Hello and welcome to Place My Mahmood. And today's our guest is Angel Lipo, and he's known as the Confident CEO. And he plays multiple roles in his life. Like uh, to name a few, he is an influencer, LinkedIn strategist, and international TV host. These are just a few titles of his. And today, I feel honored to interview him. So, for our listeners who don't know you. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how the journey has shaped you today? Of course, thank you. Thank you very much, Mahmoud, for having me, and thank you everybody for listening to us today. So, as you said, you know my name is Angel Rebo, uh, and uh, my brand is the, the CEO Confident. And basically, both uh, accomplished entrepreneurs and corporate CEOs they hire me to bridge the gap globally for expansion and exposure. I basically help them take their businesses internationally. As a way to accelerate the growth of their businesses, and uh, basically, I've done that for for a long time already. And the reason why my brand is what it is is because you know when I left corporate America five years ago, I counted how many you know companies and and, and CEOs I had held before, and in the last twenty plus years, I have held more than twenty, excuse me, more than fifteen hundred CEOs in thirty three different countries. So thank you for having me. Uh, besides that, I'm also the president and co-founder of uh, Wisdom for Kids, which is a foundation we help underprivileged kids in Latin America become entrepreneurs using the local resources. Yeah, that's amazing. Like that's amazing. Like 1500 is like really big number. Yeah, that's a lot. Like how long? Yeah, it's have... a big number. Yeah, absolutely. So how long have you been connected to this entrepreneurship and? Yeah, so well, I, I mean, I've been connected to entrepreneurship for a long time since the '90s, because you know, all the time I was working, uh, you know, helping other companies develop their businesses. I was also working with, you know, uh, in direct sales models, which means that I was helping, you know, basically resellers, distributors, to develop the business along with the companies I was working with. So I was always working with entrepreneurs, and I was always helping them with their businesses, with business strategies, and to help them go to the market along with us. So I have been then involved with entrepreneurship since then, since then early 90s. And I have been involved with, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurship in Latin America as, a, as, as with my charity since 2018, probably. And we have already held more than, you know, 1,000 families uh, since then. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, amazing. So like like how did you like from where did you got the inspiration to start your nonprofit? This is yeah, your so, charity. Yes, thank you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So basically, uh, while I was working in Latin America and I lived in Latin America for ten years and I worked there for over fifteen years, so I was always exposed to poverty all the time. Every time I would go to visit some of the manufacturing plants that they were serving with the companies I was working with. Uh, all the time, you know, uh, the, those those manufacturing plants would typically be in the outskirts of big cities. And those areas are typically, unfortunately, they have a lot of poverty. And it was very common for me to see kids asking me to keep my car safe while I was inside the plant. Or they were offering me to clean the car, to wash the car, or or they were selling me gum or, or a bottle of water or something like this. So I was... I was um, all the time exposed to both, you know, very super powerful people in, in the continent and at the same time to a lot of poverty. So in 2015, I had a spiritual experience that, uh, you know, allowed me to see very clearly that I had to help those kids. And if it wasn't me, who was going to do it? So that was probably the reason I, I was so, so exposed to poverty and so exposed to business that I, I eventually came to me very clearly that I had, I had to help those, those kids. Yeah. So from like like as you said that they were selling you bottles, they were selling you gums. So through their act, so like we can say like they are already entrepreneurial from their heart, like their kids right now. Yeah, but they're still trying to sell something and earn 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 their living. So that's entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial. Then that's it. That's entrepreneurial. So like they already yes. had it. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. So. Obviously, I mean it's it's I mean it's difficult to say they were already entrepreneurs. Those kids that were selling me those things, because as you know, um, many families actually they are obliged to like yeah. suggest their kids to do this. You know, so 
you know, very often this happens not because the kids want to do it because, or it's, it's because their parents or their tutors, they're asking them to do it. So, you know, that, that's, that's a big of a difference there. But yeah. um, the communities that we go to, it's basically we talk to the community leaders and we ask them, you know, we would like to do that. We would like to actually deliver, a, you know, a workshop and help your kids in your community to become entrepreneurs. And, and you know, it's, it, it's not that common that those kids are already entrepreneurs. Sometimes they are, but it's not that common. Uh, but again, most of the time they do it because, uh, or they work, they work because they have to do it. So let me tell you an example. We, host, we go, for instance, to, a, to an indigenous community in Mexico, and it's a large area. In total, there, there are like 180 plus small sub-communities there. And many kids work, and, and they work because, you know, their parents are working on, on, on you know, in coffee plantations and other, other sorts of places. So they, they, they actually ask their kids to work along with them because the family needs that money, right? So they need more hands and more hands and more hands. So it's, they, they don't really have a choice. And what we do from, you know, on, on or at Wisdom for Kids, we, we actually... We actually work very much the mindset of those kids. We help them realize that they can really become whoever they want in their lives. And we work heavily on their self-esteem. And we really try to suggest them or, or to, to instill in them, you know, we, we use very uncommon ways to approach them. I mean, it's not our workshops at Wisdom for Kids are not like whiteboarding or blackboarding kind of thing. It's really more like experiential. It's, it's making sure that we connect at an energy level with them so that from then on, they really, really, really like know that they can do whatever they want, that they are in, in, unstoppable, that they are infinitely powerful. We work a lot on, 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 on self-esteem, but we do a lot of you know, playing and jumping and dancing and, 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 and singing. And, you know, and, and also we do a meditation along with 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 the the rest of the activities that we do with them and again we try to really the lives of these kids since the very beginning because it took to us a long time to define and to develop this workshop because we wanted it to make to make a big difference we wanted it to make a big difference in their lives that's that's really like like amazing actually like i i'm not finding the perfect word here that describe how i feel that's good that's yeah. good yeah 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 but as you know, I think it's important to expose people to new knowledge and to new experiences. And it took two, it took almost two years and two PhD students to develop the workshop that we're delivering today. So yeah, I mean, we we have really invested a lot of a lot of time in in making sure that what we do with the kids is really impactful and it's going to stay with them for the rest of their lives. Okay, so how long did it take to make those workshops? Yeah, well, I mean, it took to uh, it took to us two years to develop them, but it's it's basically two two hours long workshops, in which we pack really a lot of many different things. But it really flows very well because it's all about be, having the kids super excited for two two hours, you know. So it's it's really fun, and and obviously, uh, I mean, kids are magic, right? I mean, kids uh, have this ability to really enjoy life, like like no one else, right? They, it's, it's, it. a, it's a blessing to, to be able to work with kids and to teach them things. So, so it's two hours, but it's really, you know, when we go back to those communities, they really remember us and they really are excited about what, what they did, what we did with them, in, you know, when we, when we first engaged with them. Yeah, that's, that's like so great. Like uh, truly like kids are amazing because if you try to like, like they can be molded in any shape. That's a fact. So like if you want, if you just give them proper knowledge about something and make them interested in a topic, they're going to go that way. Like that's the truth. And that's so like building their foundations from like that early age, like is, is what the future needs basically. So like they are the future. Yeah. Like, that's the truth. And if the foundations is not good, like, then like how we how what the will the future be exactly 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 
So tell us a bit more about your spiritual awakening. Like what experience did you have? Yeah. So basically, thank you for asking. So basically, it was a, um, it was this. It's actually the second time that I feel this like super rush of uh, energy. It was a Saturday morning. I was in a hotel in Mexico City. It was 8:30 a.m. I just woke up. I was really remorseful. I was really sad. I was really exhausted because I had worked a lot the previous week. I, I missed my plane to go back home the, the prior in the previous day on on Friday. So and and as soon as I got into the shower, um, this uh, incredible rush of energy went through me, and I started crying for no reason. And all those images of those kids I had met in Latin America started to come at me all the time, and I was. I was for a few minutes crying under the shower I, on my knees and I really didn't know what that meant, but I'm having chills now as I'm explaining it um, because it was really an intense experience. And I remember it was extremely sensitive and emotional for the rest of the day, but that meant something, right? I mean, I, I think that it's the second time in my life that I really listened to what the universe was telling me just to, you know, I really believe that everything happens for a reason, you know, for instance, um, uh, and I want to really support you, Mahmoud, a lot because I really admire you and I'm impressed by you uh, because, you know, you're a, a very young man. But, you know, you said I want to have my own podcast and I want to do it no matter what. And, you know, he's on the other side of the world because he's in Bangladesh and I am here in Dallas, in Texas. And, and you know, the chances of, of Mahmoud and myself to me they were really remote. But, you know, he was, uh, you know, kind enough to invite me to his podcast and, and I'm really thrilled. I mean, I'm, I'm one of his, his first uh, guests and I'm really thrilled to be able to share my experience, my journey and my knowledge. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great, it, it, you are a great example, Mahmoud, of, of someone that really wanted to make a difference in the world and you decided to actually launch your own podcast and start doing it, uh, you know, no matter what. So this is exactly the spirit that I'm trying to instill the kids that I'm helping in Latin America and this is exactly, you know, I have, I have been allowed to, to teach hundreds of salespeople in, the, in my life, literally from many different countries. And I, 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 I have to say that all of them remember me, right? Uh, and I, very often they reach out to me and they share things and experiences with me. And, and that's one of the legacies, right? Is that when you are able to help people, they will always remember that. They will always be there and they will always remember that. And you know, life's too short to waste it with the wrong people. And let's make the most of the time that we are together and let's make the most to help your audience. Because at the end of the day, I'm sure that you, Mahmoud, you're doing this to help your audience. You want to, you want to inspire people with, with content, with good content, with valuable content, and with also nice stories that are going to inspire other people to do things and to, and to, and to take action. And I tell you, everybody who's listening to us today, it only takes your will it only takes your will to take action. My favorite mantra, business mantra, is taking perfect action now. Anybody can take any action, and you don't know what that's going to take it, right? And everything happens for a reason. You know, for some reason today, I had to be on this podcast in Bangladesh. And, you know, and I'm so blessed to be here because I'm able to answer, you know, uh, Mahmoud uh, questions, and I'm able to help his audience and to, you know, to skyrocket his uh podcast and you know i'm going to, i'm going to support you mahmoud as, I, as much as i can on my social media whenever the you know the episode is is uh is uploaded and is published and everything so this is what life is about and i i really want to commend you for doing what you do every single day mahmoud yeah thanks a lot basically i'm very flattered to hear that <laughs> like yeah yeah, like 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 every single word that is said was extremely like absolutely true. It actually is only will like the first and the only thing. I not the only thing, but like the most important, like the core thing that takes is the will and the ability to take action with it. Yeah, so like that's the that's the main thing. That if you're not discouraged, so if like uh, like it, as everyone else. So most people are discouraged before starting anything else. But if mm -hmm. we have enough willing, willing power, then we will get through it. Like that's the truth. And, but like the kids that you're helping, like for them, uh, it's, this is the mental barrier because everyone else is making, like thinking that 
or like forcing them to think that uh, nothing's gonna happen, like nothing's good gonna happen. Like that, that's one of the thing. And if we are able to like, like it doesn't matter who it is, but if anyone is able to help grow this willingness in a kid, then he'll do great in, in the world, in the future and make, can make a difference in, in others' life. And that's, and, that's and, and you mentioned, uh, sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. Continue, yeah, continue. No, 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 no. I was going to say, because you mentioned something which is really important and you mentioned discouragement, right? It's true. And, and that's something that we face when we go to Latin America, because when we help kids and we have this, let, let's say, the, the initial workshop, um, obviously, we know that it's very easy for uh, the kids' parents or tutors to just with one word, with one eyesight, just to say, what you just learn is useless or whatever. Right. I mean, so it, they can be easily discouraged. But, you know, um, I think that the example that we have to actually give ourselves, you and myself as, as opinion leaders, I think that discouragement is just, you know, it's, it's, it's just a temporary loss of enthusiasm. That's what it is. So, you know, I think that we, we should, and we do, we do teach the kids that, you know, there's not, there's no such thing as a failure and that, you know, everything happens for a reason. There's all, every, all the time, there's a reason why we have to do things. And there's a reason why we have to, you know, perform certain activities and do certain things, you know. So um, regardless, everything happens for a reason. I was, I was yesterday, I think it was Tony Robbins, like seven, seven basic principles that he, you know, that he runs his life by. And, you know, Tony Robbins, obviously, he's a very powerful, he, he coaches, you know, very powerful people in the world. And one of the, them, one of the things that he was saying was, you know, it's, it's everything happens for a reason. And it's true. You know, you never know where something is going to take you. You never know. So just take, take, take the, you know, failures as a, as a lesson and no matter what, and no matter who discourages you, keep in mind that, you know, life is long and, you know, you will, you will have time, time to learn and to apply those lessons and, and, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. You are infinitely powerful no matter what. Yeah, absolutely true. Like uh, you just reminded me of one quote, uh, like mm, like this quote was like it's from Elon Musk, and uh, like I heard it from like I guess uh, I'm not sure. Like maybe it was a a show on Mind Valley uh, by her by his mother, Elon Musk's mother, mother, or maybe a webinar. So she said that when the first rocket failed like like up before launch elon musk didn't said that we failed or he was not sad he was excited because now we know these are the issues now we now we know more about this problem now we can try to find out solutions of it so i think and everyone should think in this way that any failure that occurs we know that now we know which problems we have to solve and now we know which actions we have to take to get better better at it to take a better approach and to take another way or build a new way to go where we want to go or maybe we can go further than we how we plan and i that, agree yeah absolutely and this this is a like very powerful statement because like like I guess 90, I'm a very big fan of 80-20 rule. So I, I would say 80% of people are discouraged or like see failures as like, that's it, that's end all. Like that's end all. And they are not learning from it. So, and uh, from also a book, I'm not sure like the name of, of what's the name of it, it was. So it said that until the time you learn from your mistakes, and get better at it, you're gonna keep failing on that thing. Yeah. So, so you have to see every failure as a way to learn new things and grow our skills so that we can like just crush that thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree, uh, Mahmoud. 
Totally. And again, that's why it's important to keep the enthusiasm, you know, from, from one failure to the next failure, right? And again, I think there's a saying also about that. So, um, yeah, that's why, you know, I, I am a very, a pretty upbeat guy and, you know, very enthusiastic and very passionate about what I do and being on, on interviews and everything. And that's why I think that's also a mission, the ones of us that we are good in communicating or, or, or even if we're not so good and we still want to learn and can learn about communication, I think that we have to do it because we have a mission. We have to help others that don't, are not on the same spot to keep on moving forward, keep on moving forward. You know, we are right now living after 12 months. It's now March 2021. We've been for 12 months now living under restrictions all over the place. And I'm sure that Bangladesh is not an exception. So, you know, uh, we have learned that it's possible in only a few days something to be really literally be running all over the world, right? So, and restrictions all over the world. So I think that we have to help each other and we have to make sure that we use everybody's energy for the good of everybody. And really, I really believe so. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I completely agree with that. So I like the, I actually missed a word that you said, like, uh, or like I cast your word. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so the question that I got in mind when you were saying that, so like, what was the biggest struggle that you faced, like communication struggle that you faced during the quarantine? Like this question just came into my mind when you were talking. Yeah, um, well, first here in Texas, we I think we only had one or two weeks of lockdown. So, I mean, we really were not quarantined and people were going out on the streets still, you know, so we've had a very, let's say, as many other countries in the world. I mean, we I can talk about Sweden, about Finland, about Norway, about, you know, Serbia, Montenegro, Albania, Tanzania. I can, I can literally talk about countries all over the world that have had a different approach as opposed to have being extremely restrictive. They have actually kept, you know, the, kept the, let's say, the freedom uh, intact so that, you know, the human the human body would would actually adapt and everything uh, i mean if you see if you see um you know every country has led and every state here in the us has 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 led let's say the situation in in, in a different way and um so i i wouldn't say i had communication problems uh i, I would say obviously that i'm used to have face to face meetings so i had to stop having face to face meetings for a while but i resumed them and again um, I, I, like last year, I, I met personally face to face tens of executives of companies here in Dallas. So, you know, um, um, again, I think that being respectful with everybody, uh, you can still keep on, you know, communicating with them and, and just be cautious and aware of, of maybe, you know, some restrictions that, that had to be in place. That's it, you know, but, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good question. I, I think that, maybe communication wasn't the problem, maybe connecting, right? I think that it's strange to see now someone that this did, not, did not disconnect with someone. I, I, I like to say that I'm really, one of my missions in life is to connect the unconnected. And so I think that last year, a lot of people got unconnected or disconnected. There were a lot of breaches between people that were burned uh, and, and again, I, I consider myself also as a public figure being, being in that spot in which I have to really diligently work to bridge that gap between the people that were, you know, polarized or disconnected or, you know, fell into different sides and they could not, you know, reconcile. I think that it's important for us to, to be building those bridges because, you know, we've always lived in peace and, 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 and and loving and liking, you know, so why, why, you know, allowing those probably one of the most 12 most difficult months in, in our lives, why allowing them to be, you know, forever permanently, like, you know, uh, um, wiping out our connections. And so that's why I think that connection is something that really was, um, was damaged last year. And not necessarily with me, again, because I, I know that I have to be extremely compassionate about everybody and, 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 and thoughtful and aware. But I know that there are a lot, there's a lot of people that have, you know, lost friends and relatives, like, 
like friendships, I mean, relationships that were broken. And, and I think that rebuilding those bridges, it will eventually happen again. It will take some time, but I think that uh, we are here to do that. And, and you do that with your podcast every single day, Mahmoud. Thanks again <laughs> for like this machine that um, yeah that's that's really awesome because like I, I loved your mission which you said like connecting with connecting unconnected people because like that's really important because because of this especially this I I don't exactly say that because of this only this they say pandemic only but for a pretty long time people are un unconnected. Like people are getting unconnected, like they're connecting on social medias. That's true, but most of the people are unconnected with each other, and that's a really big problem because we have to get connected to solve the biggest problems in the world. Let's say like hunger is a great problem in a, in a large portion of the world. So let's for even solving that problem, we have to get connected, and if you're connected, and like. Like connected minds create solutions. That's the thing. Like, cause, well, let's say like the most genius person in the world. Let's say Einstein, for example, though he's not there anymore, but even if he, he was alone, he might have, like he could have did the best thing, like, like invented the best thing. But if like when other people were also around him, like that's what actually boosted, like boosted his invention a lot. I believe that because it, it's, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. It's about connect, like getting together with other, other great people. And then you can create the best of the best thing. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're touching upon something which is really important, which is collaboration, right? I mean, yeah. the lack of, the lack of connection you know, could unfortunately be uh, at the end could be like a lack of, uh, you know, communication. Right. Um, but it doesn't have to be, you know, I think that reconnecting means that collaborating as well. And I think that the future of the world is collaboration. Sure. You know, um, we've, we've lived under, under, a, you know, competing spaces forever. And I, I, I'm not saying competition is not bad. is is, is bad. Excuse me. But I'm trying to say that I think that the future is collaboration because, you know, there's a lot of, if, if I, I don't know that due to what has happened in the world for the last 12 months, there's going to be a lot of many different initiatives uh, related to collaboration, helping each other and, and flowing and flowing and flowing and, and, you know, and making this world a better place, in, you know, with many different ways or in many different ways. And yes, and being, you know, being, uh, being, uh, um, Aware of this, I think it's really important today. Today, more than ever. Like, that's the thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The collaboration is, I completely agree with that because, like, without collaboration, like, we're going to make great things happen. And, like, in the future, all the great innovation has to come through collaborations and not in the future as well. Like, in this, in this time, let's say today, we need anything that happens today is because of collaboration. And if, you are not connected with amazing people, like people who want to have, like who have similar passions with ours. So let's say we want to solve this problem. And there are a lot of people that we don't know about who are also passionate to solve this, this, this exact problem, not, not, not even with a different thing, like or not even with a twerk or anything. So if you are able to bring those those all passionate people together, like they're gonna work passionately, even if they have nothing. And that's where the magic begins, truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are magical beings, and we're again we are infinitely powerful. It's a matter of just you know talking to each other and and you know helping each other and keep on exploring, you know, and and keep on. You know, I, I, I that's that that's why my I mean I go back to the same thing. You know, taking imperfect action now. I think that taking taking action is so powerful. It gives you so much power and it gives you so much experience, and you 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 are able to be more intentional in what you do every single day. As far as much as much as you take action, you 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 keep on 
you know, putting yourself on the line and, and doing things that you didn't think that you could do. So, uh, you know, it's, it's like me, you know, when I started my, let's say my solo preneur career, well, right now I have a, I have a large team in my company, but when I started, uh, it's actually, I mean, I, I only had, I had a very limited presence on LinkedIn, for instance, LinkedIn is the platform where I worked most. Right now I have 27,000 connections. And I have made them all a lot of mistakes, but right now I have a very engaged community. I help them a lot. I, don't, I give a lot of value away. Uh, and, you know, this is, it's just, you know, part of, part of who I am and, and, and part of, uh, of, you know, making mistakes and, 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 and doing a lot of things with many different people. You know, it's, uh, I think that, and, and I think Tony Robbins says it very well also. I think that, the, that your worth or even your wealth <laughs> is totally proportionate to the amount of people that you're able to help. So if I want to help, you know, if, if I want to be really like, you know, wealthy, I think that, that I have to really make sure that I'm able to put out there a way in which, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people can benefit from what I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, like, I don't know, like uh, talking with you, like all the quotes are coming to my mind, <laughs> like while talking to you, because um, so it's about um, helping people. Like uh, one thing is if we want anything in life, I forgot the author, author of it, who said it, but uh, if you want anything in life, like, sorry, 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 I said the opposite. We can have anything in life if we help enough people. And this is, this is, this is absolutely true because even if you are selling any, any product, we are helping them to solve a problem. So in, in that regard, we are helping them. And the more people were able to help and or, or another thing, so like if the problem is bigger and we are, we are able to help more people and we're going to get more wealthy, like that's the truth. And it didn't like, it's not anything forceful that we're taking money. It's just we're helping and in that exchange, they are giving us. Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, it, I mean, it's by definition. I mean, it's, uh, you know, but that's, then it's the, the question is then if, if, if the people listening to us, right, if they want to get help uh, and they want to reach that point, you know, how do they do it? How do they get the message across? What's the right message? What's the right service? What's the right product? I remember last year here in the in the in the Dallas community, you know, I, I collaborate a lot with many different business accelerators and as startups and, and entrepreneurs. And I was I gave actually two times last year I gave a, uh, a couple of uh, uh, webinars about pivoting. So pivoting is the concept of reinventing yourself, right? So when you pivot, this means that you are, I mean, that, that falls shifting. like the basketball. Yeah, exactly. So the basketball term of pivoting, right? So. Um, I think that it's important that you know how to pivot. It's like important that you know how to put in place what your passion is, what your expertise is, what the market really, you know, is, is, is willing to pay and what the market wants. Those three things, those four things, excuse me. I think it's, those four things are extremely relevant and extremely important. Uh, and, and that's really the basis for, you know, for, for anything else that, that you want to do. But you have to do it properly. I think that you have to do, you haven't done it yet, just ask yourself those four questions. What are you passionate about? What, what other people tell you that you're really an expert on? You know, what do you think that the market needs and or the market wants? And because that's important. And then, you know, is the market going to pay for it? And how much is going to pay for it? You know, so those four questions. Ask those questions to yourself. And I think that you will then be able to, to really set up and an a starting point for your entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, those four are really amazing questions because we can start from there. So like, like, like if we kick out every other thoughts from our mind and we start from there, we can get a clear direction and we understand the people like what they want, what we want, and then align it with like what our strength is. And then to like after combining it, like we are, we'll set the price as well, like depending on the market, how much they want to pay. And then you lose it. And another point, another thing that also came to mind was uh, we have also have to check if the market is also ready for it. Because 
there are a few invention i guess of which was invented mm -hmm. and they did not succeed when they were invented yeah yeah because the market was not ready yet but after a period of time when the market was ready then when it was released it became a quick quick hit like in in, in over it became overnight hit because the market was not ready yeah yeah i agree uh, you know but still you know i i always like to ask the question of not whether a product or service is going to succeed but how do we make it successful i think it's a different you know i think it's it's the right question to ask yourself is to ask you know what do you have to do or how do you have to make it successful i think that we should ask ourselves a, dif a different question and uh, that's why it's so important also what we do in the schools with the kids underprivileged kids it it gives us you know again you know being in touch with kids all the time and so being able to 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 bridge that gap between the super powerful connect the super powerful connect them with the super underprivileged it's a, it's such a great experience because you know again it's it's bringing the authenticity of the kids and of the ones that have achieved almost anything in their lives absolutely like yeah to so those are like these are very powerful words you can say like these are like the definition of growth you can say i for me yeah so now before we like like get out of like this conversation and to go go at ahead of our day like is there any last in word of inspiration or any final words that you want to say yes you definitely want? so yeah the first thing obviously is thank you again uh, you know mahmoud for having me uh, thank you to the audience who's listening to us today my name is angel rebo for the ones that are only listening and not watching this video and you don't see the the you know the visuals here in the on the screen uh angel is spelled like in angel and you know from heaven and rebo spelled r i b as in boy o uh if you want to find me my brand is the ceo confident as as Ma mahmoud said earlier and you can find me very easily on linkedin the professional network i'm but you can find me easily anywhere really, really because i i post everywhere really i post everywhere every single day okay i post everywhere every single day so you will find me on twitter on instagram on facebook besides besides linkedin itself and if you want to reach out to me directly and you want to send me an email it's very easy it's angel a n g e l at angelrebo.com so angel a n g e l at angelrebo which would be a n g e l r i b as in boy o.com and and either myself or my team are going to be answering your email so thank you very much and the last I, the, the last thing i would like to leave everybody is that we are genuinely infinitely powerful and we can really achieve anything in our lives so i would suggest you that if you want to start helping others again i mean even if you're not even an entrepreneur it doesn't matter you know just to start helping others and and as soon as you start helping others and being exposed and being exposing yourself and your knowledge and your experience and your passion and your enthusiasm with others lots of things are going to are going to happen and lots of things are going to surface I encourage you to do that and you will see how your life changes in in a very short period of time. Yeah. So even by while living you just said your like you share your biggest wisdom. And so I'm sure people who were who are listening to this got value out of it. And yeah, and thank you very much for coming to the podcast. I highly highly appreciate your presence. And yeah, that's how we end it. and i i will soon upload it so and bye to the audience